Shalom, 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 shalom. First, I want to give you the praises and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rokar, Kadash. Today, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who are leading this word in truth and in spirit and in sincerity. And salutations to all of the righteous Hebrew Israelite brothers that are teaching this word in the name of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And not in the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom to the Akiyam, to Akwas out there. Today's edification is called The Higher You Climb, the Harder You Fall. The Higher You Climb, the Harder You Fall. That's what today's edification is called. So, we as Israelites, we Israelites, those of us that descend from the 12 tribes of Israel, we fell very we fell very hard from our climb we were once considered the number one nation and we fell very far very very far from our climb to the top that the lord had us under solomon david and king saul we fell very hard because we are the lord's chosen people all right the 12 tribes of israel those of us that descend from the 12 tribes that are here today are the Most High's chosen people. The scripture says, we're going to read a little precept here concerning our fall. Because where I'm going to get to on this, on today's edification, is to show you that Esau's fall is going to be just as hard or even harder because they themselves, the Edomites, have climbed so high. They themselves are ruling the world, they're at the top, they're at the peak of their powers. And they're about to consolidate their powers with what you see going on around the world today. All right. So we as Israelites, we fell. We fell very, very, very hard. Right? From our status in this world, as we are considered the least of all nations. So let me quickly read a precept from out the book of Baruch to explain a little bit about our fall, just so you understand. And to know that Esau Edom is gonna fall just as, spectacul just as spectacularly, but even worse and even more dramatic and drastic, all right? So, let's put this over there. So, let's go there. So we're in the book of Baruch, right? Book of Baruch, chapter two. In the Apocrypha. We're going to read a precept out of the book of Baruch, chapter 2, in the Apocrypha, right? So it says here, therefore, book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 1, right? Verse 1, we're going to start at chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1, sorry, getting tongue twisted here today. Today, by the way, is July, is it August? Yeah, it's August the 1st. The year is running fast. Today is Sunday. August the 1st, 2021. So time is really, really creeping up on us really fast. So let's go to it. Verse 1. Baruch chapter 2, verse 1. All oh, that rain is starting to fall down a little bit. I can feel it. We're going to deal with it. It says, Therefore, the Lord has made good his word, which he pronounced against us. Against who? Against the children of Israel, right? And against our judges that judged Israel and against our kings and against our princes and against the men of Israel and Judah to bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven, right? Which is, as you can see, from 70 AD, one of the great plagues that the Lord brought against the children of Israel when he set the Romans against us in 70 AD to take down Jerusalem, to destroy Solomon's temple to cause the children of Israel to eat their own children in that captivity, in the siege, all right? And then after that, the great destruction of us again was what? Transatlantic slave trade. So roughly 1500 years after 17 AD, the Lord sent Esau upon us again, these Edomites, to do what? To take us down in the transatlantic slave trade. So it says here, Therefore, the Lord has made good his word, which he had pronounced against us and against our judges and against Israel and against our kings and against our princes and against the men of Israel and Judah. Right? 
to bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven as it came to pass in where in jerusalem according to the things that were written in the law of moses all right because remember this was prophesied this was moses had prophesied this in the book of deuteronomy right and leviticus what was going to happen to the children of israel in the future because we stop following the laws commandments the statutes so like i said today's edification is called what the higher you climb the harder you fall so moses moses prophesied the fall of israel of jerusalem right he prophesied the fall of us and the destruction of our people under the edomites right who back then were the romans today they call themselves europeans right so verse 3 it says chapter 2 baruch chapter 2 verse 3 it says that a man should eat the flesh of his own son see so baruch is showing you this and the flesh of his own daughter so that's what happened right they were eating their own children under the siege of the romans between 66 a.d and 73 a.d the siege lasted around seven years but they called it 70 AD because at 70 AD that's when it kind of um what's the word I'm looking for that's when it that's when they got into Jerusalem that's when they took Jerusalem down it was actually 70 AD but the siege itself started around 66 AD all right so it started during the reign of Emperor Nero and ended under the reign of Emperor Vespasian and his son general titus and general domitian right his two sons but it started under nero the siege of jerusalem so it says here verse 3 it says that a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter moreover he has delivered them to be what to be subjection right to all the kingdoms that are around us to be as a reproach and a desolation among all the people around about where the Lord has scattered them so that leads us back into where the transatlantic slave trade so when we speak about the transatlantic slave trade that was the final part of the scattering of the children of Israel so Baruch is talking about this here all right Baruch says this here verse 4 he says I will read it again Baruch chapter 2 verse 4 it says moreover he the most high has delivered them them are the Israelites to be in subjection to all kingdoms as we are today that are around about us to be as a reproach and a desolation among all the people around about where the Lord has scattered them thus we verse 5 thus we were cast down and not exalted so we now were cast down so that goes back to what i said the higher you climb the harder you fall so thus we were cast down not exalted because we have what we have sinned against who the lord yahweh bahashim yahweh shai our power and have not been obedient unto his voice clear as day so we at one point had climbed very high very high under Solomon under David and even under Saul right but then after Solomon that's when it all started to go pear shape that's when the kingdom was split into two that's when Solomon's son became the kingdom of became the king of the kingdom of Judah his name was Rehoboam Rehoboam and then you had Jeroboam, who was from, I believe, from the tribe of Ephraim. He became the king of the northern kingdom, which is known as the kingdom of Israel. Right? So we had climbed very high as a nation. We was in power. We had all the nations around us under subjection. We had the, David had the Edomites under subjection. He had the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Hamites. When the, the, the Cushites came to see Solomon. She, she, you know, Queen of Sheba couldn't believe how splendid, how much power, you know, he had, how much wealth he had, how much knowledge and wisdom he had. So we was at one point at the top. 
we had climbed very high Israel very very high but that fall boy was hard because that's the proverb the proverb says the higher you climb the harder you fall so that fall was hard and this is the end result of that fall today you see our people you see the state and the condition of our people the children of Israel we can see it in their everyday lives this is why we always give thanks and glory to Yahweh Shai that he woke us up. He considered us worthy to be considered the hopeful elect, to be considered the remnant, to be woken up out of this deception, this fall that we're living under. So let me go to... I'm going to jump down to... Uh... Let us continue here. So verse 6 says, we're going to continue in Baruch, right? We're just working up the spirit today. Straight off of the spirit today when it comes to these precepts, yeah? It says, to the Lord. So we're still in the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 6, right? It says, to the Lord. Drop a me. To the Lord, our power, right? To the Lord, our our power, Yahweh, attain his righteousness, but unto us, the children of Israel, and to our fathers, open shame, as appeareth this day. And we see that open shame still this day. We see the fall and the devastation and the deprecation of our people today. All right? It says, For all the plagues are come upon us, which the Lord had pronounced against us. Where did he pronounce those plagues against the children of Israel? in the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of the laws. That's where he pronounced those plagues against us as a nation. All right, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of the laws. Verse eight. So we're still in the book of Baruch, chapter two, verse eight. It says, yet have we not prayed before the Lord, we might have turned everyone from the imaginations of their wicked hearts. Wherefore the Lord watched over us for, for evil, and the Lord has brought it upon us, for the Lord is righteous in all his words. While he has commanded us, yet we have not hearkened unto his voice, to walk in the commandments of the Lord that he has set before us. So who was the Lord's commandments and statutes given to? Just to the children of Israel. It's starting to rain, but we're going to work with it because it's not too heavy. It's just sprinkling. Dear Lord, show me a bit of mercy today. Let me finish this today's edification out here on the highways so it says verse 11 says and now O Lord the power of Israel that has brought thy people out of where out of the land of Egypt that's where we was first taken out of right with a mighty hand with a high arm and with signs and with wonders and with great power has gotten thyself a name as appears this day O Lord our power we have what we have sinned we have done ungodly we have dealt unrighteously in all, in all thine ordinances. Let thy wrath turn from us, for we are but a few left amongst the heathen where thou hast scattered us. So we are, so we are a few left amongst the heathen where the Lord has scattered us. Yeah? Just so you understand. So, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to, Second Ezra's Second Ezra's, I'll come back to there, that's eight five. Chapter five, alright? Because I say it again, so what's happened to us is gonna to happen to Esau, alright? But in a more spectacular fashion. Esau's destruction, Esau's fall is going to be on a global scale. When I say a global scale, the whole world is going to be there to witness it. The whole world is able to witness our fall today, but they don't recognize us as the children of Israel. They look at those people that they call Israelis and they still believe that they are the children of Israel. Those Eastern Europeans that you see popping around with those yarmulkes on their heads and the wigs and the black dress up in full black and the twister hair and all the rest of it and that. Those are the recognized so-called Jews. 
but those are not the Jews of the Bible. Those are not the Israelites, right? Those are Edomites masquerading around as Israelites. That's who they are. So, Second Ezra chapter five, verse one. It says, nevertheless, right? It says, nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, right? Behold, the days shall come, that day which dwell upon the earth shall be what? Shall be taken in great number. Gonna be taken in great number. So that stays what? That's the coming of the Lord, right? Two thirds of the children of Israel shall be taken in great number, but so shall the other nations be taken in great number. So that day is coming. So that fall for Esau Edom is coming. Absolutely coming. We've said this time and time again. This is something that we preach week in and week out. But that fall is coming. It's whether you, it's whether you want to hear or whether you want to forbear. So it says, The day shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden and the land shall be barren of faith. And that's what we see today. This is why we're here. Because we are exposing, bringing out the truths of the world, of the Bible, of what's to come. But the way of truth has been hidden in the land, right? So who controls the land? Who are the gatekeepers of the land? The Edomites, Esau controls the land. They are the gatekeepers. They are, in, they are sitting in the power seat, all right? So it says, and the land shall be barren of faith. And we see that today as well. The land is barren of faith because most people are worshiping some type of idol God. And then you've got those that are worshiping white Jesus Christianity, which is not scriptural, which is not biblical. Then you've got those that just don't believe. So the land is absolutely absolutely barren of faith like what the scripture says so it says here but iniquity the rain is starting to come down boy so we can bear with it but iniquity shall be increased above all I might have to go inside there's a little bit of shelter over there I might go inside there the rain is falling down Respect, fam, yeah? Thank you, yeah? Nice. A friend of mine starts uh, running to earlier today. So don't take a bit of shelter for that rain to start to come down a bit harder now. Hold on. Woo. Whoa. Can you see that rain coming down? Let's see. Yeah. So, iniquity is full, rampant up in here today, completely. Yeah, it's all in heart that rain today. It's just coming down. Let me get a bit of cover out there. And that. Uh, right. They're still coming. Let's see if it stopped. Oh, you know what? Look at that, perfect. Hold on, family. Ugh. The rain was coming down really hard. But we're gonna see if we can finish up over here. Take it over here for a little bit. So we're in Second Ezra's. Second Ezra's. Right. 
second edge was 15. So, so it says here, it's second Ezra chapter five, verse two, but iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest or that thou hast heard, all right? Long ago, and the land, what land is that? The land which thou hast heard, long ago and the land that thou seest now to have root shall thou see wasted suddenly so the land that we had root in was israel that was our homeland right now we've seen it's been wasted suddenly so it says here but if the most high grant thee to live thou shall what so it says if the most high grant thee to live thou shall see after the third trumpet that the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night and the moon thrice in the day can you hear that thunder and blood shall what shall drop out of wood and stone and shall give the voice and the people shall be troubled and even he shall rule whom they look not for that dwell upon the earth and the fowls shall take their flight away together Listen carefully. And the sodomish sea shall cast out fish and make a noise in the night, which many have not known, but they shall all hear the voice thereof. There shall be a confusion also in many places. And we're seeing that today. We're seeing that confusion in many places today. We see it today. That confusion in many places today. This is there shall be a confusion also in many places. All right? And the fire shall be often sent out again and the wild beasts shall change their places and menstruous women shall bring forth shall bring forth monsters so we're we not seeing that we've not seen the monsters that these menstruous women are bringing forth from there we'll see how the youth we've seen how the youth is behaving today and the scripture says and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters we are seeing that today all over the place we are seeing how the youth are today around the world all right and salt waters shall be found in the sweet and all friends shall destroy and and all friends shall destroy one another then shall wit hide itself and understanding withdraw itself into the secret chamber so this is going in more to seeing the falling of Esau's society today but this is Esau Edom society so we're now we're starting to see the fall of his society like I said the higher you climb the harder you fall so now we're starting to see the fall of Esau society today all right so these are just prophecies showing you referring to how we're going to see this happen so when it says here and the salt waters shall be found in the sweet and all friends shall destroy one another then shall wit hide itself and understanding hide itself right and understanding hide itself and withdraw itself into where into the secret chambers <laughs> preaching the word man darts me if i smoke <laughs> but that's the you fear we just said that we just read that right menstruous women shall bring forth monsters and we just <laughs> I'm not saying he's, he was a monster, but you know, by that side of thing, that's how it is. No dramas. So it says here. So verse ten says, "And shall he sought, and and shall be sought of many, and yet be, f and yet not be found. Then shall unrighteousness and incontinence be multiplied upon the earth." All right. So we're seeing that, right? We're seeing unrighteousness and incontinence, see, to be multiplied upon the earth. All right. One land also shall ask another and say, Is righteousness that makes a man righteous gone, gone through thee? And it shall say, No. Because there's righteousness is very limited in this world today. And we really have to depend on the men of the Lord to show you the righteousness. All right. To be able to bring out this word and trying to lift up our people because the only people truly that can be righteous and that will be righteous in these last days are the remnant of the children of Israel 
that descend from the 12 tribes of Israel. So it says here, one land also shall ask another and say, is righteousness that maketh a man righteous gone through thee? And it shall say no, because very few places are considered righteous today. We see what's going on around the world. And it's only going to get worse with these pandemics that we're going through, the shutdowns that we're going through. It's only going to get worse when we see the unemployment get higher. It's just going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. Simple as that. So it says here, verse 11 says, one land, oh, so verse 12, it says, at the same time, listen carefully, <laughs> at the same time shall men hope but nothing obtain. They shall labor, but their ways shall not prosper. Why are their ways not gonna prosper in their labor? Because this money system is not worth shit. S-H-I-T. It's not worth anything, this money system. It's not worth nothing. So that's why that's gonna happen. It's not worth anything. So this is here. So let's go to, bring out another precept here, hold on. Where was I going to go to? Second Ezra 15. But this is where it's all leading to, right? Second Ezra 15. This is where this great fall is leading to. So when we read the book of Second Ezra, this is showing us where it's all leading us to. Right? This is where everything is heading to. This is what the people don't want to understand. This is what they don't want to believe, right? Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Because that's what's coming. This world to the world and we're seeing it. We're seeing the fall of Esau society unfold in front of our, in front of our face. This is why I said today the application is called, right? It's called the higher they climb, the harder they fall. So we're seeing the fall of their society today. All right? This is a good little spot, you know, I'm about to <laughs> rubbish up this spot here. It says, for the sword and their destruction draws nigh and one people shall what shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands and this is where it's all going to lead to and we're going to see this happening in within civil societies we're going to see civil unrest bring that this is why i keep saying this is what the big push is about shutting down um the united states of america trying to take back their guns and all these shutdowns and because they're preparing they know that there's going to be complete civil unrest we are seeing the purchasing power of your money weaken we are seeing stagnation in the economy we are seeing what they call the unemployment levels rise we're seeing homelessness rise right we're seeing shortages on the shelves around the world so they know this is coming they absolutely know all of this is coming but they're not prepared you see mainstream media is not going to tell you this right the only place you're going to hear this is through the scriptures mainstream media is not going to tell you what's going on they're not prepared to show you this why because they have no understanding it's all what we see happening is prophesied by the lord and there is no no taking that back none at all there's nothing that can be taken back from what's going to happen everything that we see is prophetic but mainstream media is continuing to pull the wool over your eyes to make you believe that everything is okay things are as normal things are not going to go back to normal as the days and the months goes on, we're going to see the fall of Esau society. And with that, we're going to start seeing the sedition amongst men. Just like how what Ezra has prophesied here, what the angel, because this is what the angel, Uriel, remember, Ezra went into a deep sleep to see these visions that the angel brought to him. 
and that angel was Uriel that brought these visions to, to Ezra to show him what was going to happen in these last days and we are in those latter days all right so it says here verse 16 second Ezra chapter 15 verse 16 for there shall be what sedition amongst men we're going to see that all right and invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor their princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power they're not going to regard their elites that's true, because remember it's these elites that are pulling all of the strings at the end of the day your elites and your super elites are the ones that control what's going on and when i say that the most side ultimately controls everything just so you understand but it's the elites that he's put and it's the elites from these edomites that he's put in the power seat they're the ones that's pulling the strings they're the ones that are controlling what's on the mainstream media what's being said to one another they're the ones that are causing the nations to believe in their narrative of how things are and what's going on it's the elites of this world the super elites they had a meeting the other day it's called the allen and co meeting where all of the billionaires and millionaires got together secretly no press was allowed in there right they all got together to the, it, was, it was like a, a davos version 2 of davos right it's called the allen the something allen and co meeting and they was all there the the the, the, the head of google facebook you know um oracle ipm microsoft the head of nestle damon kellogg's the Shell, BP, all of the executives and super executives were all there together having a secret meeting. These are the elites getting together, preparing their next phase, all right, of this whole shutdown, lockdown situation. This is what we're seeing. So what the mainstream media is telling you is not exactly what's going on, all right? Everything that we see that's happening is prophesied in the Bible. It's biblical prophecy. So it says here, so verse, where are we? Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 16. It says, For there shall be sedition amongst men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings, which are their leaders, nor their princes, right? Which are the elites and super elites. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. So we're starting to see that already now they've got this c19 vax passports they're telling you you need a vax passport to go from a to b all right so we're starting to see this already a man is desiring to go into a city and soon he's not going to be allowed unless he's had the jab because now your movement depends on your certification of you being vaxxed if you not had the v and been certified that you've had the v they're starting to restrict your movement. So they're saying you can't go into bars, to clubs, to restaurants, to museums, trains, planes, automobiles and everything. So soon it's going to be a city. Soon you won't be allowed to go into a city unless you've had the vax. So we're already starting to see this already. This is, this is all biblical prophecy what we're seeing taking place. But it's whether you want to hear or whether you want to forbear to believe what's going on. They're going to continue to flood you with lies to keep you blinded, to keep you asleep. They like the idea that they've got the sheep. The sheep are there now. They've got the sheep moving in one direction and your elites and super elites have become your shepherds. So it says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Why? For because of their pride. The city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Right? A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods. Why? Because of the lack of bread. So we're starting to see that now. Your supermarket shelves are empty. So the lack of bread is a reality we're seeing today. They're telling you about the logistics of the delivery of food. It's not happening and so forth. So we are seeing that. We are seeing the lack of bread. All right. So all of these things are developing. All of these things that the Bible prophesies about are developing. So it says, 
It says, a man, verse 19, a man shall what? Shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy your houses with a sword. The modern day sword is your gun and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulations. Behold, says the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun all the way to the east, right? From the south or from the east or from the bindness to turn themselves one against another. So then eventually all of this unrest and uproar is going to lead to the war of Armageddon. It's going to lead to nations. It will no longer be civil unrest amongst the, 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 the population, amongst themselves. You know, black against white. You'll see one religion against another. It will no longer be civil unrest amongst the people, the population of the country. It will be civil unrest. It will be an unrest against countries. And now countries will start to look to draw arms against other countries because of they're not getting their part, their slice of the cake in what's taking place. So it says here, Behold, this is what the Most High says, listen carefully. It says, Behold, says the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, right? Because he's going to put the spirit on them through his angels to do this. Which are from the rising of the sun all the way to the far east, from the south or from the east and from the binders to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so who he's chosen? Those that descend from the 12 tribes. These are his chosen, right? Judah, Benjamin, Levi, these here. So all those that descend from the 12 tribes that are scattered amongst the nations, Predominantly those that descend from the transatlantic slave trade, predominantly that those that descend from the Native American Indian tribes of North, South America, and Canada, today who they call Latinos, Hispanics, Mexicans, and Puerto Ricans. Those are the 12 tribes. So it says here, like as they have done, yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus says the Lord God Yahweh. Right? My right hand, listen carefully, shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not seize over them. And my sword shall not seize over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. All right? We're going to jump down to verse 27. It says, For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. And that's what we're going to see. This is going to be part of the fall of Esau's kingdom. Now we're going to see the plagues come upon the whole earth. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For the Most High shall not deliver you, because you have sinned against him. So when we talk about the two-thirds, the two-thirds are not going to be delivered from this pain that's going to be coming. Why? Because they refuse to believe this truth of who we are, who they are, who the nations are. They refuse to believe the prophetic prophecies of the Bible, they've refused to believe when we tell them that the mark of the beast is the microchip. They refuse to believe that. So it says here, they want to continue holding on to white Jesus Christianity. Jesus loves everyone Christianity, which is a lie, which is not biblical. They want to continue holding on to whether it's um, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikh, you know, Scientology, all of these other man-made religions that were given to them by Esau, Eden. They refuse to believe that there's only one power, one God, one son, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. There's not many nations, there's not, there's not, sorry, there's not many gods, there's only one God, one Most High, one power, one son. So all of these other religions that we see around the world, they also will be put to bed, but people are going to be caught up in that right up until the day of his coming. Totally caught up in that. So it says here, it says, For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them, for the Most High shall not deliver you, because you have sinned against him. Behold, an horrible vision and an appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia, right, those Iraqis, those Saudis, QAEs, Bahrainis, Iranians, 
Those are the nations from the east, right? Those are the dragons of the east, right? So it says, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as a wind upon the earth, that they which hear them may fear and tremble. So those are the ones that are going to come up. So when we speak about the war of Armageddon, those are the ones that are going to be coming up against those nations. Remember, the way this thing is going to go down, you're going to have your NATO allies are going to come up against the Russians. All right? The Russians and their allies are going to go to war against NATO, America and their allies. This is how this whole thing is going to go down, ultimately. That's the war of all wars. It says also, right? The Carmanians, ranging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. All right? Let's go here. Da, 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 da. Right, yep. With great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. So that, this is going to be the war and the battles of all wars. So when we talk about this fall, this fall is going to be a dramatic fall. It says, and then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power, to do what? To persecute them. Then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. Right? And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them and consume some of them. And in the host shall he be fear and dread and strife among their kings. So the land of the Assyrians today is where the po where the Persians are, where the Iranians are. Right? That's the land of the Assyrians today and where the Iraqis are as well. These are all of the eastern, the dragons of Arabia that are going to be banded together alongside Russia, who's going to be leading them. So it says, Behold, clouds from the east and from the north unto the south that are horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. They shall smite one upon another, and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth, even their own star, and blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. So those clouds that are coming, right? When it says, behold clouds from the east and from the north unto the south, they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. Those clouds are the chariots of the Lord. Remember the scripture says, behold, he cometh in clouds and every eye shall see him, right? Remember it tells us that in Revelations, let's just quickly bring out that preset. Chapter one. It makes it quite clear here, right? Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. So it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So who is that coming in the clouds? That's Yahweh Shai, who the word ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He's coming in the clouds. So when Ezra says here, behold, the clouds from the east and from the north and from the south, and they, they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. Those clouds are the chariots of the Lord, because at some point during this war of Armageddon, as I say and I say again, the Lord himself is gonna turn up with the angels and Michael in their chariots. It says, they shall smite one upon another, and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. Those stars are going to be the missiles and the planes and, and the, um, what do you call them? The, 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 the drones that they're going to have up in the air to go against the war. That's what that's going to be. So it says, they shall smite one upon another. They shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth, even their own stars. And the blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. And doing of men unto the camels though, and there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth. So when they see these chariots of the Lord, which the world continued to call UFOs and UAPs, unidentified aerial um, phenomenons, UAP or UFOs, unidentified flying objects, those are the chariots of the Lord. Those are the clouds. When it says, behold, he cometh in clouds, those clouds represent the chariots, what they call UFOs and UAPs. That's what the Lord is going to be coming in, all right? 
It says, And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth when the Lord appears. And they that see the wrath shall be what? Shall be afraid, right? And trembling shall come upon them. And then shall they and then shall they come great storms from the south and from the north. Right? And the north and another part of the west And strong winds shall arise from the east And shall open it And the cloud which he raised up in wrath And the, st and the star stirred to cause fear Towards the east and the west wind Shall be destroyed He's going to destroy everything that comes up against him They can't win this war But the Lord is going to put the spirit on them To fight this war Remember it tells you in 2nd Ezra chapter 13 Even though they're afraid He's going to put the spirit on them to fight this war. This is what the Lord is going to do. So it says here, The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up full of wrath. The great and mighty clouds are the chariots and the stars, and they, and that they may make all the earth afraid, and them that dwell therein, and they shall pour out over every high and eminent place and horrible star. Right? So those are their weapons. Those stars represent the weapons, the firepower. So these chariots and these clouds, right? The stars ain't going to be coming out of clouds, right? Those stars are the firepower of the chariots, which they refer to as clouds. So it says fire. Listen carefully, right? We'll go back to verse 40. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 40. It says, the great and mighty cloud shall be lifted up full of wrath. Those great and mighty clouds are the chariots of the Lord, right? And the angels. And the star, that they may make all the earth afraid, and them that dwell therein. And they shall pour out over every high and eminent place an horrible star, right? As I said, the higher you climb, the harder you fall. Fire and hell, and the fleeing swords, and many waters, that all fields may be full and all the rivers with the abundance of great waters and they shall break down the cities and walls and mountains and hills the mountains and hills represents the governments they're not coming to destroy mountains and hills the mountains and hills represent the governments right that's what they referred to that's that's an allegory for what they're called and they shall break down the cities the actual cities and the walls their powers their strength right because what made a city strong what was its defenses based on on its walls Right? Back in the ancient days, cities would be built with walls and there was only certain gates that you could enter and exit from. Right? And it says, and they shall break down the cities and the walls, the mountains and the hills, which are the governments, right? That's a metaphor for the governments. Right? The mountains and the hills, trees of the woods and grass of the meadows and their corn. And they shall go steadfast unto where? Unto Babylon, to America. Because the war is going to start in the Middle East. The Lord is going to appear, that's where it's going to start fighting the nations because all the nations are going to be fighting in the Middle East in what they call the Valley of Jehoshaphat and then after that the chariots of the Lord are going to make their way to where? To Babylon the Great aka the United States of America that's where they're going to make their way to that's the final battlefield that's the place that's never going to be inhabited again so the War of Armageddon will start in the Valley of Jehoshaphat but then it's going to escalate and finish in Babylon the Great America, that place that's going to be destroyed and never inhabited again. Also known as the daughter of Babylon, spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Why? For homosexuality and for slavery. Spiritually known as Edom, because the Edomites that rule Babylon the Great, which is America. So it says, they shall what? They shall come to her, it says, and they shall go steadfast unto Babylon and make her afraid. They shall come to her and besiege her, the star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Right? Because also remember, before the Lord comes to take this war against Babylon the Great, its adversaries, the Russians and their allies, will be firing nuclear missiles onto America. So Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, Libya, Ethiopia, um, China, all of Russia and its allies will be firing nuclear weapons on the United States of America just before the Lord himself turns up. So it says, and they shall come to her 
and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. The star represents the weapons, right? The nuclear weapons. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heavens, right? That's from the destruction. And all they that be about her shall bewail her. Because it's going to be destroyed and never inhabited again. The destruction of America begins. The fall of America shall begin with the introduction. It's going to go like this. The introduction of the microchip. The crash of the economy. The crash of the US dollar. The crashing of the, the, the economy. All right? They're going to go digital. And from there, they're going to bring out their draconian, totalitarian, authoritarian rulership and decrees that they're going to put in place. There's going to be civil unrest. There's going to be race riots. Civil unrest. Black against white, you're gonna have, um, what do you call it, South against North, you know, those down in the Southern states fighting against the Northern states. It's gonna be total unrest and collapse of the society. Then, what's gonna unite them is their war against the Russians. So, as always, when America goes to war against a foreign power, that stops the division in the country because now everyone's behind the soldiers and the government and the, you know, the USA, USA. So that's how they get them together when they go to war against the Russians. So something's going to happen in the Middle East, right? Either between Russia and Israel, or Israel and Iran, or Russia and America in the Middle East. But it's, it's the catalyst of this thing, the spark is going to happen in the Middle East. That's what's going to unite the Americans and their civil unrest. And then they're going to go to war against the Russians and their allies. And then after they've gone to war against the Russians and their allies, then at some point during that war where they go to start from convention to nuclear will the lord himself turn up right so it says then shall they come to her and besiege her the star and all the wrath shall they pour out upon her then shall the dust and the smoke go up unto the heavens and they that be about her shall bewail her and they that remain under her shall do service unto them that have put her in fear right so you know I, I, I could go down more into this I don't think I need to to be quite honest um, you know it makes it quite clear what's gonna happen you go into Ezra 2nd Ezra 16 it continues with this but the point I wanted to get to you today is that the higher they climb the harder they fall so Esau Edom is sitting on the top the top they are the main they are the number one uno right they're the main people they're sitting at the top right of everything so their fall is going to be spectacular. Why? Because it's going to begin with the Edomites fighting against themselves in their, internally in their countries. Then the Edomites are going to fight against each other, nation against nation. Then the Edomites are going to come together to fight against the Lord when he turns up to deliver his chosen. And that's when they're finally going to be taken down. And the fall of this man it's going to be spectacular. Why? Because he's going to become the lowest of low. He is going to go into captivity. He's going to become a slave, a servant, and a handmaid. He's going to be working the fields. He's going to be doing hardcore slavery. The Bible tells you, Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills by the he that kills by the sword must be killed by the sword. Here is the faith and patience of the saints. So we are the saints. The saints, the only people that can be the saints are the children of Israel. So our faith makes our understand and belief and our patience is when we have to suffer what we're going through because the word patience means suffering. And also, you know, while we're suffering, we are waiting on our deliverer. We can't deliver ourselves. No, no man can deliver the children of Israel. Only the Lord himself can who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shai, because he's a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. So, I pray this was an edifying lesson, an edifying, edifying lesson, spiritual lesson, to all of the brothers and sisters that may tune in later to this video, as you know, it's pre-recorded. Today is August the 1st, 2021. I was like to say, we like to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakak Dash. As we say, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who are leading this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. And salutations to all of the hopeful elect, hopeful elect, because no one is going to know out of Israel if they are chosen until the day of judgment and the day of salvation. 
we can only continue doing this work in truth and spirit and sincerity and putting our trust and our faith in our Savior, Yahweh Shai, in the Hebrew, which means He is the deliverer. Because only He can deliver us, family, from this oppression. So, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to me again, family. All praises. All praises.